Hi guys, Misha Crossing here. Today I'm going to show you how you can hack your copy of Animal Crossing New Leaf to edit your town to your desires, get however many bells or items, um, unlock public works project, move villagers around, whatever you want to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. You can do it with uh, every firmware version of the 3DS, even 11.2, the most recent one. Um, before you couldn't do this, um, it had to be like 10.7 or older, uh, but there's a new way to do it called Sound Hacks, which goes offline, so the ways that have been patched um, for your 3DS basically to be hacked with homebrew has been patched. That's unnecessary information that you don't need to know for actually hacking, so let's just get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is take out the SD card from your 3DS, put it in your computer. You can see mine is over here, um, and there's nothing on here. Uh, if you've hacked before, I would definitely recommend deleting all files that you've used to hack before because they're not going to work and they might even mess up what you're trying to do uh, with this method here. But anything unrelated to hacking is fine to leave on your SD card. So SD card in. Then you need to go to this website. Um, it is link one in my description box. Um, there's a link one and a link two. So first you need to go to link one and you need to download um, the homebrew starter kit, which is down here just a little bit. Um, under installation. So download homebrew starter kit. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what all of these files do because I don't super duper know myself everything they do. <laughs> um, so, but we needed to download that. So we downloaded the starter pack and it unzipped and opened up here. So everything in that starter file you need to select and I'll drag over here and drop them onto the root of a uh, my SD card and the root of your SD card just means don't put it in another folder in the SD card, just drag it and drop it and save it directly onto the SD card. Okay, that's done. So that put homebrew onto your 3DS, which is basically a way for you to um, hack your game, basically for our purposes. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is a save manager application, uh, which is what's going to get your save file out of your game in order for you to edit and then also put the edited save file back in. So go to link 2 in the description box and you're going to download um, this JKSM uh, save manager. What is it? Like the JK save manager? Yeah. Um, so you're just going to want to download this first file right here, JKSM bunch of numbers dot zip. So again it's a zip file. You're going to want to unzip it open it up here for me um, and you just need to drag the top two files on there to your SD card, the 3DS and the JK, JKSM.CIA file. So drag it back over here and then yeah it might asking you about merging uh, the 3DS folders. Um, you can say merge, you can keep them in separate folders if you really want to, um, but it, it's not a problem to merge them. Now that we've got the save manager on here, we need to get sound hacks downloaded onto the SD card, uh, which is your entry point into Homebrew. Um, just basically, you just need to download this file. So back to link one, we go, the first link in the description box. Um, back at the top of the page, uh, you need to download one of these uh, sound hacks files here, whichever one goes with your 3DS version. If you have an old 3DS, um, a US one, then you would do this one, a new 3DS, you do this one, and then they have um, options for the Korean, Japanese, and European 3DSs as well. But mine that I'm going to be hacking on is an old 3DS, so I will download this file, and then you just don't want to put it on your SD card. Next step is on link three in the description box. I forgot to open this up uh, originally, but here we are. It's the homebrew page, and you need to scroll down and download the uh, other app file here. And so you're going to want to enter your 3DS's firmware version. So if it's an old, you need to select old or new, depending on if it's an older or newer 3DS. And then, so I'm just going to enter mine here. And you can see your uh, 3DS software slash firmware version by going to your settings app on your 3DS and it will display your firmware version on the top screen. So once you have that input, you need to push download other app, not ROP bin, that's something else. So download other app, unzip that file. 
Okay, it's here. I just accidentally downloaded it like 27 times. So drag that file that you just downloaded from uh, the homebrew page and put it also on the root of your SD card. And you're going to want to rename this file other app. Um, it can be, if you're on a Mac you could, it, or a PC, I guess, it could just be other app. Um, if you have any problems, you might want to rename it other app dot bin. Um, apparently that has caused some issues for some people, but yeah, other app dot bin, rename that file. And for now you're done with your SD card. So eject it from your computer and put it in your 3DS. Once you have your SD card and Animal Crossing New Leaf in your 3DS, you're going to want to open the Nintendo 3DS sound app. This is how we're going to get to that save manager application in order to actually get the save file out of Animal Crossing that we want to edit. So you're going to want to open your SD card folder and then play this file, which is probably the only one on it unless you have sound files for some reason. And then it'll go through a few kind of weird sketchy looking screens before it opens the homebrew launcher. Now you're going to want to scroll down until you see JK Save Manager. Open it up, and select Animal Crossing New Leaf, open that up, and it'll go through another couple sketchy screens until you get to this screen. So you want to go to Save Data Options, and we're exporting a save so that we can edit it on the computer, go to New, and then you can name it whatever, whoops, whoops, whatever you want. My town's name is Kodama, so that's what I'm going to call it. It exported the file and now that save file is on our SD card. So now we can put the SD card back into the computer. Once your SD card is back in your computer, you got it opened up here, you're going to see a new folder called JKSV, which is what you created with your save file in it. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the saves folder then into Animal Crossing New Leaf and then into whatever you called your save whenever you exported it on your 3DS and the file in here that you're going to want to use is the garden plus dat file and so this is your save file from your Animal Crossing New Leaf game so you're going to want to sorry my cat is trying to <laughs> get into my lap um, you're going to want to save a backup of this file in case just something goes wrong um, which I will try to I'll warn you about certain things that you can't do in your town that will potentially uh, harm your game, but for now just make a backup of it. Um, I actually already did this earlier when I tried this, but I'm making a backup again, so I'm going to say keep both. Now that you've got that, you can open up the save manager. I think I just said save manager, but I meant save editor, which is link 4 in the description box. It used to be called the RAM editor, but it's been updated a lot and now it's just called uh, the save editor. So go to the bottom of that screen and press choose file and go to your SD card and click the Garden Plus DAT file. Don't click the one that's on your desktop because remember that's your backup to replace in case something goes wrong. And it's going to open a page like this. I will briefly go over all of these different tabs up here and all of its different features for how you can edit your game. So first up is this map page, which clearly it shows your map with a bunch of colorful squares all over it. I'll put a list in the description box basically of what the different colored dots or pixels mean, but you can basically figure it out that uh, bright green things, this one is uh, uh, a pink azalea bush. It shows you when you hover over the pixel what is in that pixel. And uh, so there's a blue hydrangea bush, those are some white violets. There's a rock here, there's something, anything with a question mark on it is something you've wrapped in, in wrapping paper, so those are different presents I have laid out for Dreamtown visitors. So it shows you what is in every single square of your town. And these with the little uh, corners turned black are to show where either like buildings or public works projects are. So this is the... This is my villager three, which I'll kind of go into how you know what villager is who. And it also shows your coordinates for, for each item. So that is going to come into play whenever you want to move buildings around over here with your coordinates, but I'll go over that in a second. The big thing that most people want to do with hacking is place 
trees and nature in their town and also get bells and items. So what, how you do that is on this first page, you have a drop down list with literally every single item you could possibly want in the game. There's furniture, um, you know, every amount of bells possible, all the bugs and fish and KK songs and clothes and yeah, just anything and everything. But that's a really, really long list. So you can search it right here. So say you wanted some black, sure, tulips. Um, type in black and it brings up all the different black flowers. You can even do wilted versions of them. Um, then a lot of other stuff at the bottom not related to what I want. Say I want black tulips. You just click black tulips. It's filled in with the current item selection and you just press on your map wherever you want those black tulips. You can put them on, uh, you know, pavement, you can put it in rivers, you can put it wherever you want. With this, you can also place trees, like you can place cedar trees in the lower part of town if you want. So you go down to cedar here, it's got the different stages of them growing, uh, which is cool, and the different special uh, stumps as well. But I just want a full grown cedar tree. These you can also place in rivers, you can place them on the beach, you can place them on the pavement, whatever you want. Now, like I said, you move your buildings around by using their coordinates. So all of your buildings, including public works projects, your villager houses, and your characters' houses are listed here. Uh, the main way I would recommend going about moving things around is find wherever you want the building or public works project to be while you're playing your game and set 100 bells down on the space where you want it. And the space where you want to set the bells is the space um, like right behind where you would stand whenever you are standing somewhere to show Isabel where you want that public works project or building to be built. Basically it's like the item or the uh, building's focal point if you will. So for buildings or public works projects that are four spaces, so two by two, you'll want to put the bells in the lower left square on your Animal Crossing, in your Animal Crossing town. Sorry, I'm trying to get, get this out and say it properly. If it's something that is three by two, like the town hall, if it's three across, you'll want to put the bells down on the center square in your town. And I've got, you know images to hopefully help show this is where you should put your bells down. So once you open up the save editor and see where you put those bells, so just pretend with me for a second that you put 100 bells in this square in your game because that you wanted to indicate that this is where you wanted, um, say, the fire pit to be moved to. Um, so I would go, I would put the bells down in my game. This is where I want the fire pit to be. So I would open up the save editor to see 6131 is the place where I put the bell. So I would go over here on my list to my list of buildings and select the fire pit. And I would just put in 6131. And once I save and, and put the file back into my game and load it up, the fire pit will be right here instead of where it currently is right somewhere. Well, uh oh, it already moved it. Ha 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 ha. It was down here, but it just moved the coordinates up here. That's nice. That's a new feature from the old one that I used to work with. You can also fiddle with the coordinates just with these right here. If you know you want to move the building just one left or one right, you can fiddle with the X and Y coordinates to move them around that way. Now, other things on this page down at the bottom of the map, you can select an item and then choose fill all down here, which will fill your entire map with whatever item you have selected, or you can choose remove all, which will remove every item from your map. Maintenance, you can pick up all your weeds or water all your flowers or add a perfect fruit to trees. If you press accept, it'll do that, but I don't really want to do that. Uh, you can revive grass, um, which will grow grass literally all over your map, even on your beach ramps where there are dirt patches. Uh, it won't grow grass like on the sand or on the plaza or anything like that, but it will grow it on the beach ramps. Or you could choose desert grass, which removes all grass. <laughs> And down at the very bottom of this first tab is the map editor, which used to be its own separate thing, but it's 
one with the save editor now, which is really cool. And basically, you can just click a square on your grid, and then you can choose from every single, whoops, um, acre option to replace it with, but you want to actually make a map that makes sense and would actually work in the game, so you can't put, like, this acre right there in the middle of your map. You know, the river would end right here, this river's trying to come from up here, it just wouldn't work. And you you know, shouldn't have a waterfall in the middle of nowhere over here where there's no river. You have to have a dock, things like that. Uh, but basically you could just scroll through and select and change every single, every single tile. And it's really, really fun to do that way. Yeah, and it says up here, warning, an invalid acre structure might freeze the game while booting. And if you press more info, it'll go to this, um, kind of warning page for what your town has to have in order to not glitch and not not brick your your cartridge. So there must be at least one pond, there must be two waterfalls, uh, one on the cliff and one going into the sea, there must be a town plaza, there must be two beach slopes. Um, do not do weird things with the acre editor, try to keep a valid structure, like I was saying, you know, you can't have a river coming from nowhere. Keep at least two rocks. Move them using the map editor if you need to. Uh, keep enough free space for buildings in the town plaza acre. So if you put weird stuff in the town plaza, put buildings in there, or uh, public works projects, the game will freeze whenever special visitors try to put their tent somewhere they can't. Uh, and then just be careful when moving any building. You can adjust building placements with the editor, but don't do weird things like placing houses in the water. I've seen people put houses in the water and on the beach and not have a problem with it, but still just be careful. All right, back to the editor. And once you, if you edited your map, you could press import map or no, export map. What does export map do? Oh, okay, it just saves it as a map. Okay, cool. And then you could import it uh, to another game if you wanted to. Now on the next tab up here, you got your players. So this is my mayor, Misha. I also have a second character, but it has all of her info. You can change gender, you can change uh, hairstyle and face and hair color and eye color, which, you know, if you just changed it, it would well, I thought it would change the color right there. I guess you just have to kind of experiment with it. But shows her playtime, her birthday, whenever she started. You can edit uh, your bank account to max out at 999,999,999 bells. Fill your encyclopedia, your medals, max out meow coupons, uh, max out your emotions that you learn. You can place any items that you want, like up here, like you were on the map. You can place them into your storage and your island box. And down here, you can edit your character's house exteriors. I haven't used every single one of these features, every single one of these edits, so I really can't say what will and will not corrupt your save file. But all of the included hacks should work perfectly for you. Um, the developers of this, you know, work really hard to make sure it's safe, um, and they do warn you about doing things that will corrupt your save file. And at the bottom it shows what badges you have. You can all oh, select what level you want of that badge, which is really cool. You can import or export patterns that are in your character's pockets. You can edit their house down here. This is what's showing on the floor in your rooms, and this is showing what is setting on top of items. So like I have some strapped books. I don't know why it's showing that they're watered, or why the candle is buried. Um, but I have strapped books and a candle sitting on top of the fireplace right there, so it's showing these on here. So you can place items in here like that. Um, I haven't really tried this editor out, so I'm not sure the exact uh, way it works. I just put 100 bells there instead of whatever was there before, but I'm not going to save this, so it's okay. Over to the island tab up here, you can basically edit your island, island the exact same way you would edit your town by placing items in here. You can also edit the acres on the map, which, you know, don't do anything from your regular town on your island. Use only actual island uh, map features down here. 
And then you can also move apparently the island hut and Lloyd around, though I haven't tried it, so I don't know if that will mess up your game. Then up here in the villagers tab, who you can change so many things with your villagers. You can change who the actual villager is. You can click on that little edit icon and scroll through a whole list of villagers. And you can change fauna to apple if you want. It shows a cute little picture, their personalities. Uh, you can reset their villager data or you can um, keep it the same as the other villager. But that's personal preference. Or you can choose to have them boxed if you want to. So they'd be moving the next day. If you want to give this villager to someone else, go ahead and have them in boxes. You can also change the wallpaper, the flooring, the song that's playing, the shirt they're wearing, the umbrella they carry when it's raining, and all of the furniture in their apartment, and their catchphrase. It shows what past villagers you have here. I guess that would help with the 16 villager cycle, or it would help with just interacting with villagers in other towns and them remembering you. I don't know exactly why you would want to edit this, but it's there and you can choose who is in your campsite in your town, uh, the NPC that is in your uh, in their RV in your campground, and a special villager in their RV in their campground as well. Now another little tip about moving villagers houses around, it shows here your list of villagers along with a number, so villager 1 is fauna, villager 2 is clay, etc, etc. So if you want to move a villager's house around with this building editor, you need to know their village number from this page. So if I want to move Fauna's house around, she is villager one. So I would go to this list and find villager one right here. Um, this is villager one house. So this is Fauna's house and her coordinates. So I can move them this way. The shops page, I really don't know why you would want to edit these things, but if you want to, you can choose what they're selling at retail, um, or at Gracie's, or at Nook's Homes, or what Leaf is selling, things like that, but don't put items in there that the game wouldn't naturally generate. I don't know how, how touchy it is. Then you can import or export different patterns into your Able Sisters, the ones that your villagers will be wearing. You can change the items in the island shop, museum shop, literally everything. Things that Harvey's selling, I don't know why you would want to, because any of these items you can just place in your town uh, and not have to buy them from a shop, but the options here. And the other tab up here is some um, just other random edits you can make. You can actually change the name of your town. You can insert a special character uh, from the 3DS keyboard. You can change your native fruit. You can change the type of grass you have. It's winter in my town right now, so it's showing the winter grass. Um, the type of grass on your island, your town hall color, train station color, the size of your tree. Uh, okay, you can't change your playtime, but it shows you your playtime. Um, and different cheats that you can utilize. You can unlock all Public Works projects, um, and you can set your turn at prices to 900 to 9. 90 bells, which is useful if either you just have a bunch of turnips or uh, you want to help out other people with a lot of turnips come to your town and, and sell turnips at a really high price. Then you can also change or uh, edit what's in what items are in your museum rooms. So those are the basics and a lot of the details of how you use the uh, Animal Crossing save editor. There are other little details I probably didn't mention or skipped over. Um, but it's really fun to get to know this editor and uh, edit your town. Now once you've made all the changes that you want, go up here to save changes. It will download a new Garden Plus dat file, which you're going to want to put back on your SD card uh, in place of the original Garden Plus dat file. So delete that one, your original one, and rename that the new one that you just put on there. So it's just Garden underscore plus dot dat. Um, so now your save file, your edited save file uh, is on your SD card. We can eject it and then go back to the 3DS. Back on your 3DS, open up the 3DS sound application again. We're basically going to go through the same steps we did the first time, just very slightly different. Open up your SD card, open or play this file, and it should open homebrew again. There we go. 
scroll down to JK's whoopsie daisy, JK save manager, open up Animal Crossing New Leaf, my cat's trying to get in here, no ma'am. And instead, uh, well, we're still going to go to save data options, but instead of export save, we're going to go down to import save. And then go to Kodama. Um, really restore Kodama? Yes, really restore Kodama. So that is going to put the edited save file into your Animal Crossing New Leaf game. And you can open up uh, your game and your changes will be there. As long as you didn't do anything that was frowned upon in that list that I went over. You should now be completely set up to hack Animal Crossing New Leaf. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. But please, first, read all the information on all the links that I am putting in the description box because there, people have a lot of questions. Uh, people get a lot of errors. If you're getting errors, I would say for you to just delete everything on your SD card and follow all the steps over again until it works. Um, other than that, just read all the information you can. And then, if you still have some questions, I will try to answer them. Um, I hope this helped a lot of you. It's really fun to edit your Animal Crossing New Leaf Town. Uh, if you're opposed to hacking your town, that's okay. You don't have to hack your town, but don't make others feel bad for hacking their town. It's a fun thing to do, and it is the way some people want to play the game, and I enjoy it myself. All right, feel free to leave any video suggestions you have in the comments. Uh, I'll be back soon with a new episode of my Animal Crossing New Leaf Let's Play. You all have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another, and don't forget to be awesome. Bye!